Hello everyone and welcome back to Dark Souls Easy Mode. Um, that's actually something I forgot at the end of last episode that I wanted to do before going down to the catacombs. And that is um, downgrading a certain item. Well, you need. Okay, for this we want to go modify equipment, move to the last, uh, last option here. And um, I'm going to downgrade the occult club to a divine club plus five. Now usually you don't really want to downgrade weapons, but in this particular case, don't get yourself killed. Neither. Thank you. Um, the occult club is not much use to me, whereas the divine one will have a use, which I'll explain when we get to it. Okay, I have to walk back to Firelink now. And now we'll head into the graveyard. This is the place where I actually got the weapon I'm using right now, that's Vyander. And um, when we got the, the weapon, we were way too weak. We could not fight the enemies there, they would have beaten us quite easily. Or it would have been much too much of a hassle. So, if you recall, I just went in there for a suicide run early on. And now, we do have enough damage to deal with these guys. Notice how I got souls for killing them. That's important. To note, where is there's the divine? I just had it. Why would I mm -hmm. hit B instead of A by accident? There's the divine club. Okay. Can I still fast roll? Looks good. So at this point, these skeletons aren't much of an issue anymore. Now let's head deeper. There's not really anything up there that's worth taking. I'm not sure if I'd gotten all the items on my first suicide run. But even if I didn't, there's nothing there worth really taking. Okay, let's go right here. Trigger the first skeleton. Oi. Just die. Okay, notice I did not get any souls. Oh dear, that's weird. I should be getting souls, shouldn't I? I killed an enemy. Oh no, he's coming back to life. Okay, I expected that to, to stun him, but apparently not. There we go. And now I did get souls. Hmm, that's a bit strange. Well, obviously I'm not very surprised at this. Oh yeah, and these floating skull things explode when you get near to them. So, best not stick around. Oh, skeleton, hey. And this is why I made the occult club into a divine club. These skeletons cannot permanently be killed just yet. Later on, I will be able to. Duh. Okay, I used the club to kill you. Don't make me a liar. That cannot have been the same skeleton. I got souls. That's weird. Okay. Well, whatever. Point still stands. I'm not quite sure what that was. Maybe I forgot one or something. I don't know. The point is, these skeletons will not die unless you kill them with a weapon that is divine. Now, divine upgraded weapons are not the only weapons that are divine. Whoa, 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 whoa. Whoa, 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 whoa. Stop dodge rolling me. But just downgrading the club is probably the easiest way to get one. Which is why I did it. He was in his parrying stance, so I used a jumping attack, because those cannot be parried. Um, and yeah, using a divine weapon makes it so you can permanently kill the skeletons. There's also another method that I will get to in just a second. But um, yeah, I would recommend get a divine weapon of some description before you go down here. And uh, just this club you just find lying around in Anolondo, so it's easy to get. 
and uh, yeah just downgrading it is fairly simple now I'm switching back to my actual weapon going down here and there's a guy who throws fireballs that I failed to dodge he's not very strong though okay this is a necromancer he's a unique enemy who will not respawn and each necromancer is sort of responsible for a certain amount of skeletons, a certain set of skeletons, let's put it that way. And as long as the necromancer is alive, the skeletons don't permanently die. They come back after a while. Not too long, maybe 5, 10, ten seconds, something along those lines. Oh yeah, by the way, note how the fairly poorly made animations here. It's meant to be crawling with insects, but because it's not a very uh, high res thing, it doesn't really look that disgusting. But yeah, once the necromancer is dead, the skeletons will also stay dead permanently, even if you don't use a divine weapon. But of course I would still recommend using one, because it makes just going through this area for the first time much more hassle-free. Not sure if you noticed, but the skeleton's eyes don't glow anymore. That basically means that their associated necromancer has died. Okay, I should be attacked by at least one skeleton before I can get this dude. Or maybe not. Time to put that upgraded longbow to use. Curse. There we go. And that's that necromancer dealt with without much trouble. Okay, let's see if I can do this. There's a fairly easy way to deal with these skeletons. If I can do it, I might still be able to. You just stand right here. That's the fairly easy way to deal with them. Okay, come at me. Well, never mind then. Um, that guy kind of did a weird direction with that jumping attack. Usually if you go right here, that pathfinding will make them jump straight off and just die. Um, not sure if I actually want to go all the way through the catacombs. There's a fairly convenient shortcut. Um, can go through further, but I don't think there's any items I really want. So I'm just going to heal up. And then I want to be landing right down on that ledge there. Let's see if I still... Okay. Then I want to go back to my Divine Club, because there is a skeleton here. That needs to die. Okay. Next jump. Or, well, drop, rather. Down here. If you're human, you can summon an NPC here, called L Paladin Leroy, who is a, um, a reference to Leroy Jenkins, of course, which, uh, if you don't know what Leroy Jenkins is, then, well, I guess, welcome home from Mars. Um, if I remember, I might link to it in the description. I probably won't, though. <laughs> um, it's it's a uh, I'll I'll just tell the story instead of linking because I'll forget that. Um, it was I think in the vanilla World of Warcraft days. I might die here, by the way, because these guys are really annoying. 
And there was this guild, they won a raid, and they decided if they wanted to attack a certain encounter. I'm not sure if it was a boss or what was up with that. Okay, any more coming right now? I don't think so, but there might be. Definitely don't want more than if more than one of those at a time. There we go, there's the next one. And this spinning attack, it is a bit homing and really, really dangerous. You don't want to be caught in that. Um, anyway, so they were out there planning, you know, they, they decided, okay, actually Leroy, one of their members, he, he needed a certain drop from that boss. So, you know, they'd always had trouble with that and they decided to have a strategy meeting. And Leroy just said, okay, I'm going to go AFK for a bit. Making his food something. Oh crap, really didn't mean to aggro everyone. And so they, they developed a fairly intricate strategy on, on how to how to deal with this because, you know, we'd, we've always had trouble with this. And this is what happens. Whoa! And this is what happens when you get two of them. Um, so... Um, yeah, they they started strategizing, making up a plan, you know, you pull this and then you, you, use, you use this ability and I'll do that and then we'll pull them over there and then we start killing that and it was all very intricate, which if I, I don't play World of Warcraft much myself, or I didn't, still, I don't play it at all right now, it never played it much, so it really wasn't a very meaningful strategy meeting to me. Um, but yeah, it was clear that they were planning in, in great detail how they would deal with this encounter. And then at some point Leroy comes back and he just says, oh screw this, and just runs into the room aggroing everything. And she, while he does it, he just shouts, Leroy Jenkins! Which has since then become sort of the, the thing to say when, when doing Reckless and poorly thought out stuff. So just running into a boss fight without adhering to the strategy that you've planned. And it, it's just a big internet thing. I'm sure everyone knows the story already, but um, then there's that fairly epic line when, uh, when he comes back. Well, at least I got chicken. Don't want to be using up. Whoa! Did not mean to do that. I didn't even hit the roll button. For heaven's sake. Don't don't spin at me. Don't spin at me. Don't spin at me. Don't spin at me. Said don't spin at me. For sake. I'm dead pretty much. Okay, he animation cancelled on me, that was not nice. Okay, I want him to spin into a corner. Whoa, 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 whoa. Okay, one more. Ah, oh, I hate these skeletons. I have no idea how I survived that. Wow. Um, well, obviously I have an idea, I made a video of it, but wow. I had not expected to survive that, let's put it that way. Uh, there's one more that I definitely want to kill. Come on, spin at me. Yeah, so you want to dodge sideways, obviously, so they spin into a wall and then you can get them fairly safely. They are not to be trifled with, these things, if they get you into stun or as you've seen when I died earlier, they will just tear you up. They do a ton of damage. Okay, now let me move in this general direction. There's two of these floating skulls. Hello, floating skulls. Do you want to detonate? Thank you. They're fairly easy to avoid. And then up here, there's a fella.
Just need you aggroed, thank you. And this is another one of the Black Knights. And that was enough to kill it. Nice. He did not give me his axe, though. He can drop the uh, Black Knight Great Axe. And then... Is this open? I'm not even sure. No, it's not. Okay. Um, I'll show you how to get here at a later point. You can sort of hear... There's hammering, rhythmic hammering. There's a blacksmith behind that wall. Um, he's the blacksmith who deals with fire and chaos upgrades. Again, I'll, I'll um, show him to you eventually. Um, or maybe not. Again, this is not meant to be a full playthrough or 100% or anything like that. It's meant to show you sort of tricks and easy ways to get through the game quickly and get powerful quickly so you can then um, tackle other stuff that the game throws at you more easily. Now this guy here is known to be one of the easiest boss fights in the game. Um, and it's not a difficult one as such. But people certainly have died to it and um, the point is that usually by the time you get here, as I am doing right now, you're fairly late into the game. I mean, I've killed a few of the um, of the big bosses. I've gotten two lord swords already. I'm quite powerful. I've got well upgraded gear and all that. Um, and that's usually because the area right after this one is fairly difficult. So it most people will want to be quite powerful for it. Um, so that when they get to this boss, they're usually well overpowered. And the summon paladin Leroy that you can get is also fairly powerful. Um, he can he can solo this boss quite easily. Um, the boss itself isn't actually that easy. The reason it's so easy is because almost all players who fight him are well beyond the power level that he was really meant for. This boss was sort of a secret thing that you should be able to get to very early in the game. I could have gotten gone down here right after doing um, doing the tutorial, right as I reached um, Filing Shrine. Nothing would have stopped me from going down to this boss fight. And the point is that something you get from the boss is a very nice boost that you you are meant to be able to get quite early in the game if you knew how to. And so the boss is sort of, I feel, balanced for a, a fairly early game strength level. I might still die though. I mean, it's not a guaranteed victory. But it's not that bad. So he makes clones of himself. And he throws fireballs. Um, I got, I've gotten quite lucky here. I think he made one clone and he pretty much dismissed that clone very quickly. He can make, I think, up to five. And if you're standing here and sort of going all out to, to kill him quickly, and suddenly there's five clones and all of them are shooting fireballs, then that is a legitimate reason to die. There's no reason even to be ashamed of it. It can definitely happen. You can die to this boss. It's not a very difficult one, as you saw, he died in like three swings with me one-handing. But, um, yeah, the clones can overwhelm you and they can kill you. And um, even though lots of people will laugh if you die, if you tell them you died to pinwheel, it's not really that shameful. And this is a developer message. Obviously, I'm playing offline. It will tell you a shortcut ahead. Um... And now this is the reason I got the Sunlight Maggot. Because this place is very dark. So you pretty much, unless you really know the place well, you do need a light source. And it really helps being able to see enemies before they see you. So there's three light sources that I am aware of that you could have at this point. One of them is a lantern, which if you go through the catacombs sort of the slow way, without dropping down, just fighting your way through. Then you could now have a lantern, the skull lantern. Don't know why I'm one-handing. Should be two-handing. Um, so you could have that. Um, you could have the, um, the sunlight maggot that I'm using. And there's a mirror 
or no, it's actually a sorcery, I believe, called Cast Light that you could also have access to. Uh. Okay, I'm not quite sure where the guy is standing who's currently shooting me. Did that get that did not get hot barred? So just for good measure, I apparently I removed my um Okay here I suggest just running past these guys. There's two of them and they're a bit of a hassle to fight. And ignore that NPC. And slide down this ladder. And go, hey, bonfire! And there you go. And I'm pretty sure this is a bonfire you can warp to and not just from. And I suggest getting that because it's a bit of a hassle going down all the way through the catacombs again. Now, if you want a lantern, then I suggest doing this. Good day. Talk to him. Okay, answer no. He's asking if you're a cleric. If you tell him yes, he really doesn't like clerics. He actually has good reason to. But just tell him no, I'm not a cleric. No. No. Really? There's a fine eye And so then he tells you, oh, there's lots of treasure down this hole here. And so, oh, you go check it out. And there's indeed stuff down there. Ah, such a nasty person. And he has been in, uh, he's been in FromSoft games for a fairly long time. They've sort of, it, he, they've they've changed him a bit for some of the more recent ones, but um, I believe the Kingsfield series, which kind of came before Dark Souls, even, he was in those. And then he's in um, Demon Souls and Dark Souls One. And um, the point was always that he would kick you down a pit and then the idea is, you know, and I'll, I'll get your stuff once you've died. Um, on the other hand, the thing is you could always get out somehow. Okay, next thing. And by the way, the reason I, I did this, um, you don't take fall damage funnily enough, but yeah. On uh, on this corpse here, there's a skull lantern, which is another light source. It's like a shield and instead of blocking, you hold it out and it gets, gives you light. Um, I'll, I'll show you something specific about it in a moment. Um, I also didn't mention it when we just defeated Pinwheel, that last boss. We got the Rite of Kindling, um, which is should be a key item. Rite of Kindling, right, which boosts bonfires even further. And this allows me to kindle bonfires beyond the normal limit. So, so far I could get up to 10 Estus flasks from bonfire. I can now kindle them twice more to get up to 20 esters from a bonfire. And that's that's what I spoke about, uh, the nice thing you can get early game if you can defeat Pinwheel early. Um, is that uh, right of kindling? You're no hollow, are you? Please be able to... Okay, so she tells me that um, her two knight friends have gone mental and hollow and evil. And they're somewhere around here. And look, there's one of them. And look, there's one of them dead. And there's the other one. Hello, you. Come on, you want to heal yourself? Nope. Fair enough. Um, yeah, if you've got a strong weapon, they shouldn't be much of an issue. You can also try and kick them down off the ledge. But keep in mind that one guy um, also uses... I think it's just the Force Miracle, or it might even be Wrath of God. Um, he can he can blast you away from him as well, and you saw him uh, attempt a kick as well. So 
they do know that there's edges here and they do know that they can kick you off them as well. Okay, once you've killed them both, you get the replenishment miracle. Um, useless to me, but you know, it's there. And you've saved Rhea, of course, so that's nice. Um, now you want to get out of here, I suspect. And that's a bit of a hassle without range stuff. Because of these guys. Did I just... Oh, nice. I'm one-hitting them. That's very nice. These guys have some nasty attacks. Okay, but I can one-hit kill them with an R2. That's very convenient. Um, there might be some other items down there, but um, none that I can think of that are really useful. So once you're out, you're basically back where you started from. That's the bonfire we rested at, and this is where the guy stands. Oh, hello. Oh, well, I did please. You know what? You and me. You and me. No, I'm not going to forgive you. Oh, for heaven's sake! You're still alive. Wait, still alive. I know. And he gives you twin humanities. So basically tell him you don't forgive him, he gives you stuff. If you forgive him, it, it doesn't matter really. <laughs> he just doesn't give you the stuff. I did you wrong. Please. And the second time, he doesn't offer you, you the option Please. anymore, but uh, it's fine. You haven't messed up anything by saying you don't forgive him. He just gives you the twin humanities, which obviously you want, because they're twin humanities. They're nice to have. Okay, um... At this point, I'm going to rest at the bonfire and end the episode. It's been a decent length. And I should be able to get one more level up. Yes, nice. Yes, I'm going to very likely die a few times next episode. Okay, so yeah, let me know if you enjoyed the episode, and I'll see you soon. Bye-bye.